so in Revelation chapter 10, verse 4, the thunder uttered their voice. John is told to not write them. Okay, so before I explain about the deeper part, let's get into something practical here. So Revelation chapter 10, verse 4, you'll notice that God tells John to shut it up. Write not. Now look at the book of Daniel. He repeats a similar thing at the book of Daniel. So John was given that instruction about the end times. And Daniel was also given that instruction about the end times. These refer to end times. Then I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians 13. Now this one is really important. I know you want to go to the really deep one, okay? But this practical thing is very important that you need to know, especially onliners. You need to know this one. All right, let's look at the book of Daniel, and then we're going to look at the last chapter, chapter 12. Now, notice God gave a similar instruction to Daniel at verse 4. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. But thou, o Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. So, notice verse 8. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, verse 9, and he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Okay, what's my point here? So John and Daniel are given very specific instructions to not write it down. And that the end times, a lot of it won't be revealed until the actual end times. Yes. Now, I mentioned to you before that when we looked at Revelation chapter 1 in comparison with Daniel chapter 12, the... When Daniel was told to shut it up, John reopened it because he was at the time of the end. But you'll, all, but you'll notice that at Revelation 10, during the time of the end, John was even told to withhold it. So that means there are some things that God intended to seal until what? Until we reach the time of the end there. What's my point? My point is this. Look at 1 Corinthians 13. Do you know how big people are into end times online? conspiracies, antichrist, stuff like that. Sometimes the Lord wants you to just, there are some things that he intended to close until the actually the tribulation happens. You might say, why should I know that? I'll tell you why, because you're obsessed with that. And you haven't been winning souls lately. And that's why you think charismatic preachers are okay, like us Bible-believing preachers, because they talk about end times too. So you're going to condone heretical pastors teaching wrong doctrine as long as they teach end times? That's why some members, they get bored of their pastor. He's not talking about revelation or end times. Hey, man, sometimes the Lord's trying to teach you something where you need to learn a life application on. Yeah, because you're a Christian who's going to be raptured before the tribulation. So what good is all that going to help you? See, that some of you need to get out of that uh, obsession, man. Amen. Out of that obsession with that end times conspiracy, who's the Antichrist and all that, uh, UFOs and stuff like that. Hey, man, it's interesting. And don't get me wrong, we should study the scriptures. Amen. But man, trust me, if you keep digging and digging, let me tell you this, you're not going to reach the end. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What does that mean? That means there are some things God intended to shut if there's no limitation bar on you and you've been uh, and you know more things about UFOs and end times than the than the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit and you don't even know your soul winning verses, but you know pretty much you memorize Matthew 24 after the tribulation, after the tribulation, then there's something wrong with your head. Because look at 1 Corinthians 13, verse 2. And though I have the gift of what? Prophecy. Prophecy. Yeah. And understand what? All what? Mysteries. mysteries. You're going to find out at Revelation 10, that whole end time stuff was referred to as mystery. We're going to see that later at Revelation 10. But everyone's into prophecy, 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 right? Yeah. You're all into that. And all knowledge... And though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am what? Nothing. You're nothing. Amen. Why? Do you think it is charity? Look, charity is what? It edifies. 
Charity edifies the brethren. You're going to find it right here that, let's see right here. At verse 5, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. So you're going to notice right here that charity has nothing to do with something that's weird at verse 5. Doth not behave itself unseemly. You ever see these people into prophecy, end times, conspiracy, oh, yeah. that they behave themselves unseemly? It's abnormal. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they think you're crazy. You're nuts, man. I mean, like Pastor Dennis Knoll said, you know, look, I'm trying to talk to you something normal about hunting and fishing, and all you're talking about is this stuff, this stuff, stuff. Yeah. looking for an alien, looking for an alien. Well, if you keep searching for one, you might find one. That's what he says. <laughs> so you got you to gotta back off from all that kind of stuff. Otherwise, you're going to get cuckoo land. Look at this, verse 8. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall what? Fail. Whether there be knowledge, it shall what? Vanish away. I know you want to know. Look, I want to know too. Trust me, I want to know. It's real interesting, all right? But, there are, but you got to realize this. Then that hinders your charity. Charity is edifying the church. Did you notice that with all that knowledge in your head, you notice how you are burdening people in the church? Burdening your pastor? Burdening the unbelievers around you? Yeah, talking about, you know, uh, blue-blooded aliens and then uh, end times. Who is the Antichrist? I know Obama's the Antichrist. Let's see how that soul-winning method works, you know? Yeah, <laughs> no, that liberal soul will definitely hate you after that. <laughs> so you got to think about this. Is that, see, you got to think about how is that conversation? Is that really charity edifying people? See, it seems like you love more about your knowledge, yeah. about yeah. prophecy more than people that God told you to minister to. That's good, preacher. I'll preach. Yeah. Because look at verse 9. For we know in, in part and we what? Did it say we prophesy in part? Did it say we accept the flat earthers? Did it say we accept the conspiracy onliner researchers? Did it say we accept the antichrist uh, finders? Did it, say, did it say we accept the post-tribbers, the mid-tribbers, the pre-tribbers, and the whatever tribber? And No, it says all of us prophesy in part. No exception. It doesn't matter how much you dig deep to find out who is the antichrist. And exactly what date the rapture will hit at that exact date and time. It does not matter like how much you try to dig deep and try to find out, okay, so then how deep is the conspiracy? No, you don't want to know how deep that is. We know the deepest level is Satan. How much deeper can you get than that, man? <laughs> yeah, so then you can't get deeper than that. So obviously, no matter how much you dig, you'll never know it all. You won't get the answer. You only get in part. It's so amazing. 1 Corinthians 13 should be a basic chapter. Amen. Yet they never really understood it or applied it. Okay, that was good practical application. Amen. All righty, go back to Revelation 10. Now let's go back to prophecy, knowing the deeper part now, right? Now let's go back to that one now, right? <laughs> Revelation chapter 10, Revelation 10. See, it's that balance. You got to have that balance. Amen. A lot of Christians don't have that balance. So we see right here that Revelation chapter 10, verse 1 through 4, John see, uh, doesn't write whatever this angel says, but he's shown. He's shown, right? He appears one foot on the sea and one foot on Israel. So the location he's at is in Israel here, that he's revealing himself. Remember Revelation 1, we read it. He behold, he cometh with clouds, every eye shall see him. Now, we know that that is referring to his second advent. But this is kind of strange. So let's, man, I don't have a time clock over here. This is just, okay, let's, let's put it here. Okay, so here's the church age. And then here's the pre-trib rapture. Pre, pre, pre-trib rapture. And then we see here the tribulation.
And then we know he's going to come down after the tribulation, which is his second advent. But here's something interesting. He already showed up at Revelation 10 here. You saw that? Revelation 10. So this is sometime at the middle there. Wait a minute. Then he's showing up again sometime at the middle of the tribulation before he comes down. This is where it gets pretty interesting, actually. So think about this. There are some Bible believers who wondered about this. How do you get all Israel saved? How do you get them resistant to the Antichrist? How do you get 144,000 virgin Jewish males? That, that does not count the males who are married and the, fe the Jewish females and the Jewish children. It's so big that Romans chapter 11 talks about the whole nation of Israel. All Israel shall be saved. That's a huge nation right there. So then, in other words, how do you get... Bible believers always wondered how within a short period of time, when the past 2,000 years of church history, Jews were always resistant, right? They were so resistant. But then in this seven-year timeline, or even shorter, whether it's uh, ten or seven or three and a half, it's still short no matter, uh, no matter what years you give it. They all of a sudden, there's a huge mass conversion. So well, how, how do you explain that, Pastor? Mm, this is where it gets interesting. This is why when Matthew 24 talks about uh, that when Jesus Christ comes down, all the tribes of the earth mourn. So basically they get convinced that Jesus is the Messiah. Zechariah chapter 12 says they're going to look upon me whom they pierced. So there's going to be a huge like group of Jews realizing this is the Messiah. So that's how they believe is if they see Jews require a sign. How do you get 144,000 virgin Jewish males unless he shows up or somehow appears or shows himself to those Jews? Isn't that an interesting thought? So this is not doctrine, but this is an interesting food for thought. Interesting food for thought is that he could be appearing, showing himself to the Jews. And when they all see him, then, they, then there's like a huge mass conversion. Because this is sometime in the middle of the tribulation he shows himself, which is pretty, pretty interesting. But not only that, there's another, there's another thing we note. Another thing we note is that we do know that sometime before the second advent, there is going to be a tribulation rapture, right? So maybe this can coincide with that tribulation rapture when he reveals himself. I don't know. It could coincide with that. Well, Pastor, you know, this is Jesus showing up a lot. Right here, pre-trib, here, 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 here. Why doubt him sh revealing himself multiple times when he sent down multiple angels on the earth? Amen. It's called the book of what? Revelation. Did you read 2 Peter 1 or 1 Peter 1? The revelation of Jesus Christ? That's what the Revelation chapter 1 says too. Revelation of what? Jesus Christ. What, that, what does that mean? He's revealing himself. See that? So why is it hard to believe he can reveal himself many times over here? It's not hard to believe. Oh, this is so neat, isn't it? This is so cool, isn't it? Yeah, man, you don't, you don't learn this in other churches, man. You don't get this kind of stuff at non-denominational churches. It'll blow up their minds. You teach this at an independent fundamental Baptist church, they think you're crazy, man. Oh, the joy. Oh, to joy of being a Bible believer. Amen. Yeah, oh, amen. To joy, man. oh, to joy, man. Oh, to joy, man. Oh, to joy, man. All righty then. So that is fascinating. There's one interesting note I want to say is that if you look at Revelation chapter 10, verse 1, it says, I saw another mighty angel, right? So if this is Jesus Christ, he's known as the mighty angel. If you look at Revelation chapter 5, the Bible talks about a strong angel who could not open the book. And he says, who is worthy enough to open the book and open the seals? So this mighty angel is super powerful, then. more powerful than the strong angel 
at Revelation chapter 5. That's interesting. But another interesting thing is that if you compare that with Isaiah chapter 9, he shall be called the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Look at that. Matches up with Jesus. Jehovah Witnesses, you know, they try to go around that by saying, well, Jehovah is known as Almighty, well, whereas Jesus is the Mighty. So that proves that Jesus is not Jehovah. And no, if you look at Old Testament verses, how many verses do you see where the Lord is Mighty? Mighty, 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 Mighty. And it's referring to capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah. Amen. What do you do with those verses? Okay, then, let's look back at Revelation chapter 10 and verse 5, verse 5. Now, think about this. This would make sense why a lot of Jews will be converted. So I'm going to give a couple reasons here. Why will there be a huge number of Jews converted within this short time? Not here. Okay, one, it's because, Jesus, it's because the appearance of Jesus... There is no doubt Jews will convert when they see Jesus because of Zechariah 12. It shows they look upon him whom they pierced, and then they come to a realization. So there's no doubt that appearance of Jesus will make them convicted and convince them. Number two, another thing that would, uh, is because of the two witnesses at Revelation 11. This is their Torah, Moses and Elijah. So because they literally get Moses and Elijah, they'd obviously be, be convicted. What's another one? Uh, number three is also because of the Jewish religion. Now, I know Judaism has so many faults in it, and there is some Babylonian paganism stuff, and you can find conspiracies with that. But largely, the religion of Judaism... What you're going to find out is that's the religion that is going to disagree with the Antichrist system when he sets up his idol because God has no image to them. And because God has no image to them, and then the Antichrist says, you worship me, they're not going to fall for that. Amen. And then they're going to take it as a, the Bible says he makes an abomination of their temple. So it violates, so notice that he violates Judaism. Yep. See? Well, pastor, why did you say that Judaism will be a big play for the Antichrist because of that peace treaty at the beginning. He comes in deceptively. I'm a Jew like you, et cetera, et cetera. Once he makes that peace treaty, the Bible says that in the midst of it, he breaks it. So he deceives them, and then he turns out that he's against the Jews after that. See, that's the idea. Why would Satan do that? Because that's always been his system, which you should be aware, is that he'll trick you, pretending that he's on your side, and then one day he'll betray you. That's why a lot of sat uh, Satanist worshipers and witches and uh, witch doctors, etc., man, they think that they made a right contract and they get protection from the devil or some dark spirit. No, you don't. It's a, it's a deception. It's a lie. They, right. they deceive you into giving you the power at a temporary moment. That's right. But there's pleasure in sin for a season. It's only temporary. And then one day he'll betray you. That's right. That's that was Satan's system all the time, is that he always betrays you. I don't believe in that. Did you read Revelation chapter 18? Satan betrays his own bride. That's right. Amen. The bride that championed for Satan for the past 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. See, Satan don't care who you are. He'll betray you. He'll deceive you.